Like many other locations featured by Abandoned Central, the Blue Horizon Boxing Ring is no different. It has a storied legacy and certainly one with ups and downs and both tragedy and triumph. As for the triumph, in 1964, the Blue Horizon set attendance records and many claim that one of the greatest boxing matches in history took place at the Blue Horizon that same year. In 1984, the Blue Horizon gained even more publicity and attention when it was featured on national television. As for the tragedy, unfortunately in 2009, a professional boxer passed away after a long heated battle at the Blue Horizon boxing ring. Almost if this tragedy was the final straw for the Blue Horizon, as the final fight was only a year into the future. The reputation of Philadelphia's Blue Horizon boxing ring is that it was hands down the best place that ever hosted boxing matches in the entire United States. The Blue Horizon had also seen more boxing matches in its near 150 year history than most other places in the country, with the first fight dating all the way back to 1938 and the last fight being in 2010. We've had 50 world championship boxers out of the Blue Horizon. I want to always keep their legacy and memories alive because too often we uh, lose that. June 4th, 2010 marked the very last and final boxing match to have ever taken place at the Blue Horizon. Not long after that final fight, the Blue Horizon was shut down for licensing violations and tax problems. Many people did not realize that it was actually the end for the Blue Horizon, but sadly it was over and it would never make another storied comeback. By 2013, the building was shuttered as it began to fall into disrepair. Over the years following its unfortunate closure, several rumors and plans to convert the historic building into something else made headlines. However, nothing ever materialized. Regardless of what happens with the Blue Horizon, its true identity will always be as one of the world's greatest and most loved boxing venues. As of 2021, the famous Blue Horizon is still there, although the boxing ring has been removed. Current plans call for demolition of the Blue Horizon, which has met both opposition and controversy. Developers want to build a brand new 14,000 square foot building with retail space and affordable housing in the exact location where the Blue Horizon sits today. Only time will tell what will happen with the legendary boxing ring. There's so many different opportunities for framing things. I mean, you got this wide landscape photo where you can frame it with the, the arc of, of this top portion of the ceiling right here. And then, you know, if you've got vertical shots for days, you've got lines heading straight down. And, you know, with the ring in the middle, it just looks great. You know, just the right amount of peel. I mean, the colors pop with the blue and the brown. It just, it's a really great place to photograph. I mean, it, it looks fantastic. And the fact that, you know, because of the way that you have to get in here, it's been preserved and you haven't had anybody come in and destroy things or anything like that. It, uh, it keeps it pristine as far as abandonment goes. You know? So it's always gonna be a gem for as long as it's around. The tough thing about shooting here, and probably the only thing that you would encounter that's a problem is you come here on a sunny day with how many windows they have in here and how much light comes in. I mean, you're gonna have a lot of harsh lighting, a lot of hot spots like down here in the ring right now. There's a little bit of harsh lighting, and, you know, it comes and goes, but there's no other disadvantages to coming in here that you would face other than, you know, being limited by your time that you're allowed. So you gotta think quick and, and kind of plan out what you wanna shoot beforehand. That way you're not wasting any time setting anything up or, you know, waiting on the light, it, that's, you know, the only thing that really hinders you. So just be careful of that and be mindful of what you're shooting. Thirty minutes is not enough. It's been ten minutes already. It's been sixteen. The Blue Horizon was originally built in the city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It dates all the way back to 1865 
when it was a row of three Queen Anne style residential homes all lined side by side. These homes were all four stories tall and featured unique and marvelous architectural details throughout each one of them. In 1914, all three houses located at 1312 to 1316 North Broad Street in North Philadelphia were eventually purchased by a local chapter of the Loyal Order of Moose Fraternal Organization. It was decided that they would utilize the three homes for the bones of the new Loyal Order of Moose Lodge. So renovations and alterations began on the three houses to make them one massive lodge hall for the fraternal organization. After the work was completed, all three homes now housed the entire fraternal lodge that included meeting space, a ballroom, a bar, and an auditorium. By 1920, the lodge had over 20,000 members, which was the highest membership of any fraternal lodge in the entire world at that time. In 1938, the Moose Lodge, as it was known back then, experienced its very first professional boxing fights. There was a fight card on March 1st and March 28th of 1938. The March 28th fight card featured heavyweight contender Willie Reddish, who would later train Sonny Liston and Joe Frazier. In 1960, local Philadelphia boxing promoter Jimmy Topey purchased the building from the Loyal Order of Moose Fraternal Organization. He renamed the building The Blue Horizon after the 1930 song Beyond the Blue Horizon. Mr. Topi envisioned a huge boxing venue for the former Moose Lodge and soon made his dream become a reality. On November 3, 1961, the first boxing match took place at the Blue Horizon Boxing Ring. The main event featured a local Hall of Famer boxer, George Benton, who knocked out Chico Corsi in just three rounds. On May 1st of that same year, 1964, another boxing match between local Philly legend Stanley the Kitten Hayward and Curtis Cox ended in the fourth round when Hayward came off the floor to beat Cox. Many consider this fight to be Blue Horizon's best boxing match ever in its entire history. From the 1960s all the way through the 1990s, the Blue Horizon hosted thousands of boxing matches. It almost seemed that with each fight, the Blue Horizon gained more and more attention, which led it to become legendary all across the country and even across the world. It also started to get airtime on national television when it was featured on a weekly boxing show and some of the more famous boxers, such as Archer Ogati, Fernando Vargas, and Bernard Hopkins, came to showcase their talent at the now-famous venue. Unfortunately for the Blue Horizon, tragedy struck when Francisco Rodriguez died only two days after his fight with Tian Kennedy. He died from injuries sustained during the boxing match. Shockingly, this was actually the second death to have happened at the Blue Horizon. The other death to occur at the Blue Horizon was in 1978 when Clarence Jody White died after his battle with boxer Curtis Parker. Many people felt that the 2009 death of boxer Francisco Rodriguez meant the end for the Blue Horizon 2, as the legendary venue would close shortly after. Tight shooting quarters today. Unfortunately, that's going to wrap it up for the Blue Horizon Boxing Ring. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was a lot of fun to work on, a lot of history, and a very unique, cool place to explore. As always, please subscribe to Abandoned Central to get all of our latest videos. Thank you all so much for all your support.